Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pray First. This is a conversation we have Monday through Friday, right here on the Pastor Doug page. And uh, it's uh, where we are practicing the principle of giving God the first of our day. And, and, and as we go through our day, first put God first in everything. And we're practicing that principle, not that we are perfect in that, but it's what we endeavor to do is to put God first in all that we do. He, uh, he deserves first in everything. I'm Dennis Pitts, and I'm your host today. Normally, I'm here on Friday. You, uh, Some of you were expecting Ann Starker, Pastor Ann. Uh, she's on a much-needed vacation, I'm sure much-needed, and uh, hope she's having a great time out there. But uh, today, I get to be with you on Tuesday. This used to be a day that I, when we were reading through the Bible, that I would be on here. Normally, I'm on Friday. I get two days this week. Two, two days, two days, not four, two days this week. So I'm going to get in to enjoy you today as well. Hello, Raymond Duffy, Neil Hedges, good morning. Hey, Bo, hey, Bo, good morning. Uh, Patty Hans, good morning, my friend. Greg Jones, Daryl Manning, Lana Casarino, Bobby Mason, Stevie Smith, hey, girl, Kelly Saldo, Carolyn, 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 Corrine Stickley, yeah, Donna, Donna Baker. Wow, good to see you guys. Nicole Leslie, good morning. All right, Joanne Walls, good morning. Barbie Davis, hey girl. All right, got to see uh, Dalton was with uh, Brother Randy up there in, in uh, Washington, visiting with him. So I know he's going to be in. Man, I, I know he's, he's doing good. Looks like he's doing very good. All right, guys, if you're new to the channel, you can see all these hearts and likes. Those are for you. Hello, Audra Scott. And um, and that's to welcome you to the page, whether you're watching today or in the future. By the way, if you're watching at 7 o'clock hour, if you would, hashtag live. Hashtag recorded if you're watching at any other time. And hashtag shared if you're putting this out on your social media pages. We appreciate you doing that. It helps so much to get the word out, further the word. And uh, hey, Casey Hedges, my friend and uh, helps get it out there and uh, spread a further, more territory, gets the word out, not just my word, but the word of God, not just our words, but the word of God. So, so good to have you guys with me. It is Tuesday, May 23rd of 2023, and it's gonna be a fantastic day. I'm, I've been walking, uh, trying to walk every day, a uh, mile, mile and a half, two miles. I take my dog with me. She's uh, she's over there helping me today on the couch. I'll, you guys will see her. I'll get her up on the camera here one of these days. She's uh, she's a ham, you know. She wants to be on camera sometimes. And uh, but anyway, uh, I've been trying to walk and get out, and uh, the 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 hotter temperatures are been have been a little bit of a challenge. But uh, in the last couple of days, it's been kind of cool. Allison Price, good morning, Sharon Worsham. Hey, Tina Hayes, man, I, I like to say, uh, Michelle Edge, if I miss you, don't don't get your feelings hurt. Just know that I can't do every, every, all these and get the word that I want to share with you done. I always think, man, this is going to be short, and then we, we go right on down to the, to the wire. And I'm glad that's so, because that way God is having uh, the Holy Spirit. Deborah Jolly, good morning. The Holy Spirit is having a say in this. So I titled this, I, I struggled with how to title this. So I just put, holy who? <laughs> and um, we're going to be speaking, and guess what, about Holy Spirit. And uh, I, I, there's so many things I've been teaching lately when, I would, when it would be my time on the essentials of the Christian life, the essentials of our walk with Jesus. And there's been many things. And uh I wanted to talk about the essential, I feel like, because the Holy Spirit seals us. Uh, when, when God's Spirit merges with ours and comes in, He said that I'll come in into you and, and I'll abide in you. And, and we need to abide in Him. It's not a question of is He abiding in us. If we ask Him to come in and we surrender ourselves and ask Him to come into our hearts and our, our spirit, that He'll come in. But we need to abide in Him. Uh, so, 
I didn't know exactly how to go with this, so I just want to go, let's go to the Bible. We're going to go to John chapter 14. That's where we're going to be hanging out today. And uh, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. If you don't know who the Holy Spirit is, He is the third person of the Trinity. We serve a triune God, a God in three persons. They are the same in character. Um, they are inseparable as far as character. And they are God, these three being one. It's, it's a blow your mind, right? So we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So uh, it, let me just give you a brief here. It, it's kind of like water. You can have water, there's a liquid, and then there's water that's frozen as a solid, and water that's evaporated or, or you know, how you boil it and the vapor floats up as a vapor. They are all water, just different manifestations of it. Have have uh, they're the same in character though. I was talking to my wife Pam last night, and we and uh, she said no, they 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 have the same character. I said yeah, but there are different different characteristics as far as the operations. God the Father is our Father, the loving Holy Father above all, and then we have Jesus, the loving Son that was sent to die for us the physical manifestation of God, and then the Holy Spirit, who is the, the, man, he's like the wind. He's everywhere at all times, and in us, and through us, and we, we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but I want to give you some scripture to begin with here, just to, uh, to get us rub the ball rolling. So John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, and... Uh, I think this is right after, I believe, let me make sure here. I think this is, yeah, I believe this is, we, we had uh, Judas has already gone out. Yeah, Jesus has given him the bread and, and signifying uh, that he would be the one, this is the one that's going to betray me. And it was night, and they're in the upper room, and, and Jesus is speaking to them. And I'm going to go to 14 here. You know, uh, Jesus has told them already, he said, by this, they'll know you're my disciples, by your love for one another. I know that song, they'll know we're Christians by our love, by our love. Yeah, that song pops into my head too. So here we go, verse 1 of chapter 14. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now this is, he's been with them along these disciples a long time. He's, He's speaking truth to them still. He said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He's preparing them for his departure from this earth. He's about to be taken captive, crucified, give up the spirit, not, not kill. He willingly gave up his life and buried in a tomb and raised from the dead. And he said, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and I'll receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Talk about words of comfort right there. Uh, and where I go, you know. And the way you know. And Thomas says, <laughs> Lord, we do not know where you're going and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. <laughs> you, you know, for a little bit there, Jesus seems a little frustrated when he's asked these questions. There's another question coming, by the way. I'll go ahead and get that. He, but in verse 7, he says, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Jesus was the physical manifestation of God the, God, the Father, the Son, and the Father being one. And then Philip says, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. So the, a lot of this rest of this chapter is because of that question. Philip said, show us the Father. You can understand a little bit of their confusion and frustration, even though Jesus had repeatedly said, 
I'm only telling you things that I hear the Father say to me. If you've seen the works that I do, they are the works of the Father. I can only do what I have seen him do. And these were, they, they were just constantly, he was constantly showing them the Father God. And uh, so here, and, and I think of preachers that, that get emotional. If you're delivering the word, you get emotional. Even on this right here, you can get emo we can get emotional and, and excited and frustrated sometimes. But Jesus, I can see Jesus maybe a little frustrated. He said, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? <laughs> he, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So now, how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not, not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my, uh, on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. That's why Jesus did a lot of miracles and he would have crowds come and he would heal them all. It says he healed every one of them. Uh, and then in verse 12, he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. I think he's speaking of a greater territory. The, the world was small back then, not, not, not the physical orb of the earth. I'm talking about the area that was populated. Where they were at was not, not huge. And Jesus could only be one place at a time. He was physically here in the body of man. He was all God, all man. So I think he spoke of that. And then he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's why I've been on the essential so much lately. Jesus said, keep my commandments. And, I, and, and then I think... When, when someone's saved, you know, I, I read, had, had this book one time and uh, it said, I'm a new creation, right? Or aren't I? And, and there's so many things when you first saved, you're excited, you want to do this one day, you wonder what you can't do, what you're not supposed to do, what you're supposed to do. So many rules and regulations that people, man, will put on you. And yet, Jesus didn't try to load us up. He said, just keep my commandments. And, and then he said, all this boils down to two, love God, love your neighbor. But anyway, we'll move on. And then in verse 16, he said, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. I want to I get in the Amplified on that. He said another helper. Uh, I'm going to read that to you in the Amplified. It says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. I'll give you words for helper. Comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby. One when, when comes alongside you to help you. Uh, I think of one time I was, I, we were running in physical ed, phys ed, uh, seventh grade. Everybody had to take phys ed. You, the only way you'd get out of phys ed is if you were, they were, you, know, you, you were just totally not able to run or walk or whatever. We were told to go over this huge block that was around our school in Desark, Arkansas. And me and my friend Jerry Greenwood were kind of together running. And my side started hurting. If you've ever experienced that, you, you know what I'm talking about. Your side can start hurting. And it makes it hard to run. You feel sick. You know, you're not used to running. And this was not fast running either. This was like trot running, you know. And... uh I remember Jerry coming up beside me, and he 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 kind of got got my arm and said, "Come on, man, you can do it, you can do it," and encouraging me, and, and and even physically helping me along. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He will stand beside us. He will take us and help us, not make us, but help us do what we're supposed to do. And that's keep the commandments of Christ. Let Him speak to us, even in the hard times, even in the good times. So comfort, he, be, he's, he comes to be our helper, our comforter, our advocate, our intercessor, our counselor, our strengthener, and that when it comes alongside to help us when we, when we feel the strain of the world on us, 
that makes us want to not do the things Jesus taught us to do. So let me let me continue on. 17. Oh, he gives us direction and reveals Jesus and the Father to us. Verse 18, or 17. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Talking of Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. 18, I won't, Jesus says, I won't leave you orphans like orphans, and, and, and I will come to you. He's about to physically be gone, and they're gonna be they're gonna need some help. He said 19, in verse 19, a little, a little while longer in the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. And, and then, he, then he says, at that day, you will know that I am in the father, my Father, and you in me, and I in you. 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Manifested through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, now, it doesn't say you're going to be perfect. <laughs> you know, we, we are going toward perfection. We're running a race, uh, a, a long marathon of life. This is a lifelong thing he's speaking of in, in, in very few words here. But he's saying, keep my commandments. It's essential that we keep his commandments, but we need the power of the Holy Spirit in us to abide in, to help us to keep his commandments, to help us know how to abide in him. And then Judas, not, not Iscariot, remember he's already gone. Judas uh, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? See, the, he was with the, the, the 12 and he was he manifesting to them and they didn't, they, they didn't understand that when the Holy Spirit would come, he would manifest to all people, to the lost with conviction, judgment. And Jesus said in 23, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. He keeps saying this, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. You, you have to accept him, and he will manifest in, in love and, and more than just the conviction. Holy Spirit brings conviction and reveals the goodness of God as a, as a separate thing that... that that, that we just feel our sin. I, I spoke to you, I think, a week ago how that uh, that's how God revealed to me but in His goodness. My sin was revealed and I, I melted in His goodness and accepted Him in my heart. All right. Uh, 26. He, verse 25. He said, These things I've spoken to you while being present with you but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. You know, they needed, they needed it brought to their remembrance, the apostles. They were going to write the New Testament. They were going to have to remember the words that Jesus spoke. They were going to preach to thousands. Day of Pentecost, when Peter spoke to so many, 3,000, I think, were added there. And it said, Peter, filled with the Spirit, began to preach and teach. And that old fisherman began to lay the word down to him, the Holy Ghost in him, the Holy Spirit in him. And then he said, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The Holy Spirit brings peace. I feel it right now. The Holy Spirit brings peace and comfort that, that we don't even understand, except we know it's from God. But the world sees that in us, and they don't understand it, and that's what gives them a desire, a thirst. that We're, we're being that salt and light. We're being that salt they, that, that begins to whet their, their thirst, their spiritual thirst, that salt that we are, gives them that thirst for that living water that Jesus is. And 
And then 28, he said, You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I've told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Talking about Satan. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandments, so I do. Arise, let us go. All right, they're going out into the garden now, and, then, and Jesus will be betrayed. But beautiful words there, beautiful words. Uh, it, it, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And we can know the truth and understand the truth. I can speak to you and read this word to you. You can hear it preached eloquently, but you need to seek the spirit of truth that reveals it to you even more and lets you live that truth. We need, I need the Holy Spirit to guide me. I need to feel him in situations. And, and when we need to know what to do, that we'll remember him, bring that word to our remembrance too, just like he would them when they, they, were, they, they had no physical Bible. But I still need the Holy Spirit to bring this to my remembrance, to, to say, hey, Dennis, remember what you read, 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 uh, read the other day? Remember why I'm revealing this to you? And he can do that to all of us if we seek after him. It is essential that we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in and seals our spirit toward the day of judgment. That we, we we're sealed against that day, okay, through the power of the Holy Spirit. But we can be filled with the Spirit repeatedly when we need that filling, and we can feel it. And in situations, I've been in situations I didn't know how to act or what to do. Man, I felt the Holy Spirit so powerful. And I've had times when I needed someone else to help me out, and the Holy Spirit would come along. And, and even bring the physical presence of someone else to help me along. We need each other. We need to love each other. This is just a touch on, on Holy Spirit. So much more. Uh, I'm going to leave you with that. So good to be here this Tuesday. And uh, fill in for Ann Starker. Uh, I want to pray for you guys and uh, let you go on about your day. Thank you for being here. I saw Clay Hedges come up there. George Casabante, Tasha Betcher. Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, man, Cherie told. Uh, I'm just wanting to get a few people before I pray here. There's Pastor Doug. Hey, brother. All right, so if I missed your name, good morning. Have to cover everybody. Let me pray for you and let you get on about your day. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray and thank you for Holy Spirit. Thank you for sending Holy Spirit, Father God, that we might receive him in our hearts and he might seal us, seal us in salvation and empower us, give us the power to speak that truth, that he is truth, he is comfort, he is peace, and gives us power to follow and abide in you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Lord, if there's any sick among us, I pray healing. And Lord, those that need peace, Lord, I know you're already there for them. Love you and praise you, Lord. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, all the credit, Lord. We give it back to you. And we all pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Love you guys. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for... Uh, coming here and being here and uh, uh, participating. And I'll see, I'll probably see you Friday, right? All right. Have a good day. Bye.